Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to my show. Hope you like how's playing. Cause we're gonna talk about it and touch their leaves. Uh, today I'm doing something specific. It's not a box opening. It's gonna be my first plant care video. And today I am repotting my African violets. And um, they're looking really rough. So I kind of want to go through what happened to them where I went wrong and what I'm going to do to try to fix them. So thank you so much for joining me today. I'm filming from my dressing room. That's why there's clothes hanging up behind me. So don't mind that. My husband is in the office slash temporary plant room playing video games and it's just like clickety clickety click 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 nonstop. So which is fine. I'm gonna film in here. <laughs> so um first let's sort of take a look at my violets and I'll talk through what went wrong. So here's my first little guy. You see he's looking really sad. His crown is leaning in one direction. Um, the outer leaves are limp even though um, he is pretty dry so that could be underwatering but I remember that even this guy even after I had watered him recently in the last couple months he still had really sad looking leaves. And then um, this guy right here, the problem with this one, I can explain right now, the problem with this guy is that he is way over potted. This pot is way too big for this violet. Um, I should have left him in his little nursery pot and then just dropped the nursery pot into this pot. Um, and it would be so much happier right now if I had done that. And this little guy is probably the best looking violet I have right now. Um, it's also one of my oldest violets. <laughs> and a uh, funny story, um, my cat knocked him down behind a piece of furniture we had in our mud room while I still had all of my plants in there before we started renovating. Um, my cat knocked it down. It was back behind this piece of furniture probably for at least a couple of weeks, if not maximum a month. I found him, pulled him out. He was so, so sad. Just wrinkly and shriveled and covered in cat fur. And uh, there was, that center crown was still looking perky and green. Started watering him and he's already putting out some new buds for me, so. He's a trooper, but here's the thing. I have never taken this guy out of the nursery pot and I think that's why it survives so well. Um, it is getting really leggy. Let me show you what I mean by leggy. Do you see how tall his stem is underneath the crown? That's where lower leaves have died off as newer leaves keep coming up in the middle. So all African violets will eventually do that and what you can do is repot it and just um pot it deeper so that's the plan for today <laughs> and then this guy is a really big beautiful violet white blooms um just really nice regular old green leaves um, that get really big um and this guy was this pot was not too big for this plant when I initially transplanted it, um, but things have happened. And then this last little guy, again, still in the original nursery pot, but um, really not doing, not living its best life. So I'm gonna try repotting these. Um, I have a whole new idea that I'm gonna try today. So uh, just as a little backstory, what happened here was I planted up a bunch of my violets, um, some in too big of pots, and then I proceeded to neglect the ever-living crap out of them. Um, so this is, this is what depression will do to your violets. I didn't feed them. It was like all I could manage to remember to water them. And they all got suckers on them, especially these three in the back. They each had at least two suckers on them that I removed maybe about a month ago. This is what I'm talking about when I mean African violet suckers. You'll see that there's a big main crown and then down at the bottom, 
you have two suckers on this plant. They are basically additional crowns that will grow off the side of the main stem. And if left alone, they will become bigger and bigger until the entire plant is sort of lopsided and growing really funky. And eventually, if you have too many suckers that have gotten too big on your plant, um, they will affect the health of the entire plant. Plus, they also just don't look very good. And all those compact leaves all jambled and jumbled in together will cause an airflow issue and increase the chances that you could get a fungal infection or a mold on your violet. This image was taken from babyviolets.com, which is a really good resource if you'd like to learn more about violet care. And the suckers had gotten so big that they were like literally pushing each other out of the pots. Um, so I, that was like a whole day's work just to remove all those suckers and the dead leaves and pull the dead flower blooms that had been on there for freaking ever because I was super depressed and I just, just like couldn't care, you know, not that I didn't care, but I, I couldn't actually care about them or care for them. So now that I'm coming out of it, I really want to get these guys looking a little bit better again. Like there's really just like so much dead stuff growing on these. Um, and then as a little side note, I do have a couple of minis that I recently purchased. Um, you've seen this guy and then this, this, <laughs> this guy, he's kind of sad. He was a clearance mini. So, um, I'm going to move these off to the side. I might repot them. I, I mean, that's the plan is to repot all of my African violets. So I'm going to move these all down so I can do them one at a time. Um, yeah, so this should be, should be fun. Let me show you the tools that I am using today. So I got these pots. These are self-watering pots. So this is the new method I want to try to do. So you can basically feed your violets um, a dilute fertilizer pretty much all of the time and they won't get mad about that. Let me just show you how I think this goes together. So this is the inner pot. Um, you can see that you can water here. Once it's in its outside pot, you can water in here. The water will go down to the bottom reservoir. And then this is a wick that goes into the bottom of the pot and we'll pull water up to the plant. It's a little weird that there's only one hole. Other wicking pots I've seen like this have two large holes, so it sort of makes like a U shape. I don't know if I like this. I kind of wish that there was, what the heck? Can I fit it through one of these tiny holes? Oh, I totally can. Okay, crisis averted. <laughs> so that's how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have two little, Two little guys hanging down and then sort of like a u-shaped loop of rope in the bottom okay so i'm gonna do that to all these pots get them all ready okay so all of my pots are prepared and now i'm going to um, mix up my soil so i have an empty bin here and i'm going to use i have some schultz's african violet mix there it is. Um, and because I'm doing bottom, wa bottom watering and the soil is pretty much always going to be a little bit moist, which African violets don't typically like very much. They, you know, they like to dry out between waterings, but we're not going that route. We're doing constantly moist. So I am going to make this a little bit less heavy. I'm just going to dump the whole thing because any extra I'll just put back in the bag. Okay. Whew. Dusty. This is very dry. Um, and then I'm going to add perlite. Um, and honestly, like a 50-50 mix because I want this to be really light. Okay. There we go. That should be good. And then I'm just gonna mix it up. Here's another hot tip for you. 
Um, moist potting medium is much easier to work with and will be much easier to water once the plants are in. Um, so you don't want to work with a dry medium. Um, you can get all kinds of problems when you go to water it the first time if you pot a plant into really dry soil. Um, the water will sort of just pour off the top and go down the sides and you won't get a nice good soak. So you want to start out with a medium that is nice and moist. So I'm gonna add a bunch of water to this and get real dirty. <laughs> I mean, it can hold a lot of water, so don't be shy. Don't be shy. And then I'm just gonna mix it up. A lot of people ask, you know, you're supposed to have wet, moist soil, not wet soil. Uh, how can I tell the difference? So I like to make the comparison to a sponge. Um, soil absorbs water a lot like a sponge so when you get a sponge wet like if you just put it right under the sink and get it nice and sopping wet when you pick it up water will literally just be dripping out of it and if you squeeze it a bunch of water will come out um, but that's a wet sponge uh, a moist sponge is what the sponge is like after you've wrung it out so there's still water in the sponge but it's not dripping and if you squeeze it only a small amount of water would come out um, that's what we mean by moist not wet so this is definitely getting to that point. Um, I'm just trying to make sure it's nice and even, that the soil is all evenly moist. Okay, yeah, this is looking good. I'm feeling good about this. Okay, um, the soil is nice and moist. My hand is nice and dirty. Um, so yeah, it feels good. This is a little cup I have just to like scoop soil into stuff. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, let me grab this little guy who's still in his nursery pot. Um, I'm gonna take him out. Ooh, that's very dry, very dry. And I'm gonna just kind of like try to get him out of his old soil. I won't get all of the soil out of the root ball. I'm just trying to get as much as I can out of there. That's what she said. Gently squeeze the ball. Get as much as you can out of there. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so you see this guy, yeah, he's got, he's got some good roots. Look at all that. Um, but the top of him is very sad. Okay, so my next step is going to be to remove any of the dying leaves from the stem and I'm just going to gently pull those guys off of there. Now I don't know if you can see, but this guy has quite a lot of stem um, before you get to the root. So I'm going to bury this whole stem part and in order to do that I want to make sure that this crown is as even as possible. So I'm going to remove some of the healthy bottom leaves so I have a nice even crown where all the bottom leaves sort of start on the same level. Because this guy was leaning pretty heavy, which means he's got fuller leaves on one side than the other. So I'm just gonna... All right, that looks good. Let's pot her up. Okay, put some of this new soil in there. Ooh, a lot of new soil. Okay, good. These are not very big, which means my violets are going to be pretty happy in here. Um, I don't know if I said that. Violets like to be really tight. They enjoy being root bound. So you got to really be careful when you pot them up that you don't go too big, which is the mistake that I made. Um, I potted them up way too big so they were uh had way too much room and got really weird and they just don't like it so I'm gonna be try really hard not to get a bunch of soil on the leaves and you want to bury that stem but you also don't want to have uh, the bottom leaves sort of in the soil where they can get wet and stay wet a lot you know you don't you really don't want that 
So I'm trying to like, I am keeping like a clean hand to touch the leaves with and a dirty hand to touch the soil with. Um, you know, just like when you're deep frying something and you're battering up some freaking mac and cheese bites or something. You got a wet hand and a dry hand. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. Um, to keep the soil off the leaves. And I will use a brush and sort of clean these up when I'm done. So this, <laughs> this guy still looks <laughs> kind of small for this pot, but we'll see. We'll see how he does. Okay. Oh man, that's super annoying. This little like part where you water, you got a bunch of soil in there and now it's like stuck in there. Anyways, what are you gonna do? So that's Violet One done in his new home and I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest and I'm probably going to make this like a fast speed uh, traveling through time kind of thing. Just look at how big that pot is compared to how tiny this RuPaul is. Oh, I'm so sorry, buddy. I really effed you up, didn't I? I really effed you up. Oh, I guess I should explain. I'm making kind of like a well with a hole in the middle. Um, that's the easiest way to pot. You just kind of shove it down in the well, and then there's dirt kind of all, all around it already, and then you just um, finish filling in the top once you've done that. Oh, this guy's gonna be tricky. Let's see. Oh no, he's gonna be hard because he's so wibbly wobbly, and he's really, really unhappy. It's gonna be hard. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm gonna do my best. I'm trying to like make reparations for my past behavior. <laughs> oh, for my poor plant babies. My poor little violets. Okay. This guy this is really healthy, but the stem is so tall and the root ball is so dense because it's healthy that I'm actually, I'm having a really hard time planting it deep. So I'm going to try and like flatten out the root ball. So I'm not, I'm just reshaping the roots. I'm not removing any of them. So that's a little more flat. So let's try. Oh yeah, that'll, that'll work. Okay. Success! Now it's like nice and flush with the top of the pot, which is what I want. Okay, so all of these are planted up and they look better already. Um, I am going to grab an old makeup brush and clean off the leaves. That leaves is with just an old makeup brush. Um, that's how big it is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, I forgot to mention before you do anything like this make sure you wash your hands with soap and water really really well um, because oil and dirt from your fingertips um, can damage the leaves so you just want to make sure that you have uh, clean hands before you go um, touching up your violets um, it's exactly the same kind of you know thing you would do if you were about to make love don't go into it with dirty gross hands Give somebody a freaking infection. <laughs> Not that that's ever happened to me.
all clean. Oh, I forgot to mention, I got these self-watering pots in a six pack off of Amazon and they were really not expensive. Um, you know, they don't have like, some of the nicer ones have like a little meter. They'll tell you how much water is still in the reservoir. So, I mean, that's kind of a bummer that these don't have that. Um, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and give them some water. Okay, so honestly, whenever I water these in the future, no joke, I'm just gonna take this out and put water in the bottom. Um, I'm not feeding them right now, just plain old water because um, they've just been through a stressful experience. Um, their roots are gonna need a little time to rehab. So I'm just doing water. I'll probably do water again the next time and then I will start feeding again with uh, just like your standard liquid violet fertilizer, but I'm going to do it at um, half strength that I would normally because I'm going to always have fertilizer down in this reservoir. So I don't want it to be too strong and burn the leaves. Not the leaves, burn the roots. <laughs> so before I move on to my minis, I do want to talk about, um, so I told you I've removed all of the extra crowns, basically the suckers that grow off the side of the plant. Um, and they were really big. So <laughs> I tried to prop them and you'll see I had various degrees of success. Um, this guy is in like a little dish with water and I put some yarn through there and then it's potted in Lekka. Um, it actually has two tiny blooms on it. So, you know, that's pretty cool. And then these three are just in like little glasses. Here, I'll show you. With like a, with a little bit of water at the bottom. These guys have been in here like this probably for... I want to say an entire month. Um, so I'm just, I'm actually going to pull them out and just like see if there's root growth um, and see if these guys could maybe survive. Oh, wow. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. There is one tiny root on here you're not gonna be able to see it it's tiny okay so I might just leave that guy in the Lekka and just see what happens uh, I'll fix it later okay number two some of these were like kind of falling so I put a oh this one definitely has roots okay they're still teeny tiny but can you see them? It's really hard to tell. I'll try to put my dark shirt in the background. Look, we have a few roots. They're really tiny. So I'm thinking I should just keep them going in, in this Lekka and not mess with them, not take them out, not try to do anything with them yet. I should have done that. Lekka. So what I'm trying to do is like leave a tiny hole in the Lekka for the base to go. <gasps> there. Okay. It's back in there. Okay. And then let's do this last little guy. This guy ain't got nothing. <laughs> and he is almost dead. I'm just gonna leave him though. I really wanna just see, you know, how long is it gonna take? Um, is Lekka gonna be better than soil props? And I'll show you, so I did start soil props. Um, this guy looks the healthiest, but I don't see any roots. I kinda don't wanna take him out, but I also am curious. Okay, we have no roots. How is that possible? It has flowers on it. It looks the happiest. How is it, how does this one not have roots? You guys, I am flabbergasted that that one doesn't have roots. 
Okay, so the consensus is it's too soon on these guys, but we do have some minor root growth. All right, so I'm just gonna leave them. I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing, putting a little water in there, keep them in the LECA. Don't stress out about all the leaves being all floppy. And then here are my leaf props. So I had to take off a bunch of crowns. Some of them, um, by the time I took them off, they were looking really sad, like only a couple of good leaves on them. Like these, they look sad. Oh my gosh, get out of here. Get out. <laughs> Why do you have a fur coming out of your head? Oh my gosh. He must have just had a, a tussle with the other cat. Um, he's feeling frisky. So normally the way I have propped, would you stop? <laughs> normally the way I have propped African violets in the past and had luck was with leaf props. So that's where you take a healthy leaf off of your violet plant and you cut the stem at like an angle so it's not flat on the bottom. Okay, never mind. Um, and I wonder, I can do that with one of these guys. Got some good leaves off of that one so I can like show you what I did. Oh, I have to go get a thing then. Get out of here. Be right back. So you've got your little violet leaf and you cut at an angle. Just like this. So you see how that's angled? That's perfect. And then you've got your soil. I just have like this little, uh, it's like a seed starter, like a little cheap one. It's got um, oh, 12 cells in it, see? And then it just pops into this bottom thing where you can put water. And you just wanna make sure that the, um, that the soil stays moist, but not wet. Cause if it's wet, your leaves will just rot. So I'm putting just a little hole in the soil popping my violet leaf in there. Boom. So um, none of these have babies yet, uh, but it is still early spring where I am, which means that the maximum temperature in the house is like 67 um, and it drops down to below 60 at night, even in our house, because we have like the smarts, whatever, and it goes way down at night. So um, there's no babies coming off here yet, but all of the leaves are still firm. Um, you'll know right away if your leaf props are just dying because they'll get all mushy and limpy and turn brown and you want to just take those out as soon as you can because it can kind of become like a, uh, you know, a, a hot spot of bacterium and molds and things and you don't want to get all that in with the rest of your props. So just take out those limpy, die, limpy dying leaves right away. <laughs> um, and you'll notice that one of these is not a violet. My mom gave me this tiny clipping that fell off of her. I don't even know what it is. If you guys know, it's like a succulenty kind of thing. I'm thinking it's a peperomia, but I'm not sure. Anyways, I stuck it in there because I'm like, I already have props going. I did have a couple of leaves go mushy and die on me. So I had to remove them. So I had a couple empty cells. So I figured why not? All right. And then um, if you don't have something like this, what you can do is like put soil in like an old Tupperware. Oh, wow. Get down. Maybe. Come on. Okay. <laughs> That's a good baby. He's a good listener. And take an old Tupperware like this um fill it with a little bit of soil on the bottom and then you can just put those leaves right in there um just make sure they're spaced out you don't want the leaves like touching each other a lot because you want there to be you know they all need their own little space they don't like to be on top of each other so just do that and then i would put like a bag like a clear plastic bag like something that you brought veggies home in from the grocery store or like a gallon Ziploc bag just to create a tent because you want to keep it nice and humid around the leaves or they'll start to get crispy and then die. 
Um, so yeah, I do not remember where I bought this, um, but I think it was online at like a, a seed store, like something like Johnny Seeds or something like that. So um, either that or I got it in a big box store as like a herb starting kit or something like that. <laughs> So I can't really give you a link to this exact thing, but I will try to find something uh, similar online and link that in the description below. My minis. I actually don't know what I'm going to do with these minis. Like I feel like I should leave them in their tiny pots not mess with them they dry out really fast would it be cute I have one of these left would it be cute to do like three minis in one that might be kind of fun I mean they're just tiny minis they're super cheap this is the only one that even that I even know what it is because it has a tag it's a jolly fairy I'm going to do it. I want to plant them all together. Oh, but you know what? Then I don't have anything to put in these super cute tiny pots. I'm going to do it because these two need a lot of TLC. They need to be repotted. I'll just have to put something else in these cute little planters. I'm going to do it. I got this guy for 93 cents at Stein's. He was in the, these plants are in desperate need of some help section, in their little clearance section. Um, Stein's, I'm pretty sure is only in Wisconsin. It's like a local like um, garden and home store. They have like a really big selection of outdoor plants when it gets nice out, um, but they always have house plants. They have like a little greenhouse section in the store and um, the last time I was there, I was like really loading up on plants. I was I was feeling real planty. And the lady who works in the greenhouse was like, have you looked at the clearance plants? Cause there's some nice stuff in there. And if they don't get sold by the end of the week, we just throw them away. And I was like, oh dang, thank you so much. And then she was like, also I'm going to mark everything you pick out down. So it'll be an additional 50% off. So that's how I got this tiny violet for 93 cents under a buck. I mean, it would have just been garbage anyway, so it's like, I really, really love that, you know? Some of the smaller stores you can, they have like a lot of more flexibility on their prices than like a big box store. If any of you are like violet experts and you know that, that what I'm doing right now is going to immediately kill these minis, um, you know, please comment below and let me know so I can... <laughs> Uh, pot them back into their individual pots because I uh, you know, I'm not like an African violet expert. I've had them for a few years um, but you know, I've never had minis and Experimentation is the best way to learn new things. Um, so you gotta just try sometime. Just try something new. That's exactly what I'm doing I'm gonna do it. So it's like full to the top and I packed it in and I'm just gonna like make three little holes and I'm going to pop them in. This guy can go in the littlest hole and then this guy, this guy's got to go deep because he's got some stem sticking up. Okay, that's all right. Just backfill a little bit around each one of these little buddies that are gonna be BFFs, best friends for life. And hopefully they don't hate what I've done and just die right away. All right, look at that. Okay, so that's pretty cute. They're all kind of different heights. 
um, which is fun and I like it. And I like that they're also different greens. Like this really short one is like a deep green. And then I've got, you know, my variegated one that's like white and pink and light green. And then I have just like a really classic green one with purple, purple backs on its leaves. So that's fun. I'm going to go ahead and clean these guys off. There we go. That's super cute and I hope they like it and don't die. <laughs> Ta-da! Adorable. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching again. If you enjoy this kind of content, please let me know in the comments down below because I have lots of plants and repotting is something that kind of happens on a regular basis, um, especially with it being at the beginning of spring. Um, repotting into summer is just something that ends up happening. Um, so let me know if you want to see any other repotting videos or any other African Violet Care videos things like that. And if you enjoyed this video, please uh, like and subscribe. It really, really does help out a lot, even though I'm a new channel. So I would like throw a party for one subscriber. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, be kind to yourself. Be kind to the plants. Be kind to your friends and be kind to the animals. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked my plants. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked my plants. Have yourself a real nice day and I'll see you next time.